narrator, an official, and a refugee. Yana, Ola's sister. Ola. Yana, a young mother. Narrator, and Ben, an employer. Home, scene one. Sounds of airstrikes, planes flying, gunfire and screaming is heard. A group of men who appear to be soldiers are hiding out. They whisper amongst themselves as though they are devising a plan. One of them gestures to the exit of the hideout, motioning that he will climb out to see if the coast is clear. He slowly moves towards the exit, climbing up steadily. Suddenly, a bomb is heard. The man falls dead. The other men rush to the lifeless body, attempting to bring him back to life. Female voices and young male voices are yelling, Father, come back! This can't be true! And other calls of grief can be heard. Blackout. Scene two. Two girls stand across from each other at a tiny dock. A worn down boat is docked. People are boarding. It's about time, right? Yes, I'm afraid. Will you miss me? More than you can imagine. Don't forget me, please. Oh, how can I? Who knows what will happen in the future? People change. I hope you don't. Don't you worry. No matter what, you'll still be here with me. In my heart. Ola places her palm on her chest, where her heart is. Yana does the same. But... Don't. It will be the last time we see each other for a while. Don't make it so sad. But Ola, it won't be the same anymore. Without you, no one is going to comfort me when I can't fall asleep at night. Without you, no one is going to tell me everything is going to be okay. Without you, this isn't home. Home is where you are, Ola. A tear creeps out from Yana's eye, but she quickly wipes it away. Ola steps closer, holding Yana's hand. Yana, don't be so silly. You and Zane will both well, be well taken care of. You'll all be all right. Soon enough, we'll be together again. Who's going to hold me when I have nightmares? You're a big girl now. You must grow up and be independent. Anyway, we'll see each other again soon. Wherever you're going, is it going to be far, far away? Ola musters up a weak smile. Yana sees her smile, but looks down at her bare feet. Yana begins to sob. Just remember that we lay under the same stars. If you miss me, just look up to the sky and remember how we used to count the stars together when the air raids got too loud and we couldn't fall asleep. Before you leave, I brought this for you. We all wanted to give it to you. Yana hands Ola a photo. The edges are torn. It is obvious that it is somewhat aged. Oh, wow. Isn't this the last photo? The last photo we took as a family before father got killed in combat? Yes, it is. Mother, Zane, and I all thought that you should keep this when you are away, so that you'll remember us, so that You'll come back for us one day. Ola pulls Yana into an embrace. Oh, Yana. I'll get the entire family to come to my new home as soon as I can. Our home. We can start a new life where there's hope, where there's life, where we're safe. It won't be long, I promise. I mean, after all, this wasn't your job. It was supposed to be father. But now, that doesn't seem quite possible anymore. They break away from the embrace. What is the place you're going to called again? Greece. It's in the Western world, where people live free from terror. Greece? It already sounds perfect. I'm sure it will be. You can see for yourself soon enough. One more question. Will you miss home? This war-torn land of nothing but bombings and fear? I'll miss the people. And the old times, for sure. But all this bloodshed and horror, not a single bit. Stay safe, Ola. The family is counting on you to save us from this. I'll miss you. You too, Yana. You too. 
The two hug each other again, both afraid to let go. Ola reluctantly pulls away from the hug as the boat's horn blares to signal the final call. Ola turns to board the boat. The two wave goodbye, gazes fixed on each other. Scene three. Ola sits center stage. It is obvious that she is on the tiny crowded boat. The other passengers are in various conversations. The audience can hear them murmuring in the background, but they are unable to hear what is being said. Ola is nervous and afraid. She taps the shoulder of a young mother sitting next to her who has a baby in her arms. <clears throat> Do you know how much longer it will be until we reach land? I'm not sure, but I heard from others that we'll be there in another two days or so. Are you feeling sick? She shoots Ola a suspicious glance, shielding her baby. Oh, no, uh, not at all. I'm feeling great, except I just wanted to send a letter home and I was hoping to write it now before we... The baby in the young mother's arms starts wailing loudly, interrupting Ola's sentence. She rummages through her bag of belongings and takes out a piece of paper and a pen. Dear Mother, Zane and Yana, I've been on this overcrowded boat for weeks now. I've lost track of time. Mother, I hope you can stay strong through this without me by your side. Father's death is still looming over our family and I miss him too. I'm sorry that I can't be with you right now. I must secure our safety and our futures. But we won't have to live in the rubble that we call home anymore. We can live life freely and happily without death and terror. Just wait. It won't be long. Love, Ola. She folds the piece of paper and puts it in an envelope then places it back into her bag. She looks around the vessel. Exhausted families, old couples, young mothers with babies. All of the passengers are leaning on their families, except for Ola. She pulls out the photograph that Yana gave her before her departure, staring at it hard. Tears begin to roll down her cheek. She is silent, staring at the photo with intensity. The murmuring around Ola resumes as she holds the photo to her chest, as though she's embracing her family. I love you. Scene four. The passengers on the boat are now enduring a perilous journey as rough waves and storms loom over them. The passengers are all famished and dehydrated. One of the passengers is a pregnant lady. It is obvious that she is struggling with pain and distress. The children look weak and are crying as their worried mothers comfort them. Scene five. The passengers disembark from the boat. Their identities are being checked at a refugee camp. Some other refugees are present, looking desperate for help. This is where you'll be staying, and here are your identification papers. The official shoves papers into Ola's hands and ushers her to the refugee camp before turning on her heels, exiting the scene and leaving her. Ola is alone, looking lost. So, this is it? She looks around the barren tent, closing her eyes and sighs. At least there's no war. No fear. Only hope. She starts unpacking her belongings and tries to make it feel like home when the young mother from her boat ride enters the tent. I guess fate has brought us together. We're sharing this tent. Ola pulls the young mother and her baby into a tight embrace as she begins crying. I'm just really glad you're here. I really miss my family. Hey, it's going to be okay, I'm certain. They're going to be here in no time. Don't you worry. I'm Yana. Yana, that's, that's my little sister's name. I'm Ola. And this is Amin. Where is your family? They're still back home. We couldn't afford for everyone to come at the same time. So they chose to send me here to earn some money before the rest of my family follows. I guess we're in the same situation. My family needs me. Now that we are officially registered, we should go job hunting tomorrow. Yes, definitely. But who will take care of Armin? I'm sure you can bring him along. 
I really need a job here. Scene six. The two girls go out to a market in search of a job with baby Ahmed in his mother's arms. Despite their best efforts, not a single employer will hire them. But why would they hire us? You have to understand that we're second class to them. We'll never be treated equally. Like the man at the bakery said, we don't belong here. I have Ahmed with me. Who wants to hire a young woman with a baby? Ola, we have to face reality. It's obvious we're unwanted in this country, despite its promise to give us another shot at life. At this point, one more employer pushes through the denying ones. He seems extremely nice and welcoming. Are you both in need of a job? Yes. <laughs> I was once like you two, rejected from every job because I was a refugee. And now I run my own business, employing those who are desperate just like I was. I'm Ben. I have a small restaurant around the corner. I'm in, in, in need of service. Are you willing to take on the job? Come. The two girls and Ben exit. Scene 7. Ola and Yana collect their salary from Ben and sit at the table. It won't be long until I can bring my family here. I can't wait to meet them. But it'll be a while until you meet mine. Ben enters. So you're planning on bringing your family here? Yeah, I think I've got enough money saved. But for Yana, it's going to take a little longer. Hmm, maybe I can help. Anyway, it's late. I'll see you girls tomorrow morning. They exit. Scene 8. A month later, Yana and Ola are once again in their tent, but it now looks much tidier. They're sitting down and folding laundry casually. I can't believe it. They're going to arrive today. This is finally happening. I'm so happy for you. They both put on jackets, ready to leave. A refugee runs towards them. Does anyone have family coming in on the next ferry? I repeat, is anyone expecting family or friends from a ferry today? Ola looks at Yana with immediate worry. What happened? There has been an accident. There has been an accident. The boat was found a couple kilometers offshore, sinking. I don't think anyone survived. It's not a pretty sight over there at the port. I'd stay here if I were you. Ola crumbles, tears streaming from her eyes as Yana holds her. Scene 9. What we just witnessed happens more than we can ever imagine. There has been more than 5,000 migrant border related deaths in the Mediterranean Sea alone in 2016. Can you imagine how many more are unaccounted for, those beyond the Mediterranean Sea? We don't have to worry about air raids, starvation, or simply whether we will live to the next morning. But these people, in fact 2.8 million people, flee from their homes every year in search of a safe haven, leaving everything and even family behind in order to live. They live through the impossible, crossing seas, deserts and mountains to start a new page in life. But in return, they are shut out. Think getting into a new country is the happily ever after? Think again. These asylum seekers continue to face prejudice and discrimination, economic difficulties and poor living conditions upon moving into their new home. Take a moment and think to yourself, how fortunate are we? Blackout. <laughs>